In this next example, we're just going to compute a couple of Maclaurin polynomials. Um, the point of this example is, is to illustrate something that's going to be useful for you um, if you are going to use a lot of Taylor polynomials, and especially if you're doing Taylor series. Um, one of the things that comes up is you need ways to kind of do these things efficiently, right? You can't be sitting there all day taking derivative after derivative after derivative until you spot a pattern, right? These things, they tend to get pretty messy. And so far, we've only looked at relatively simple functions, right? Once the functions get more complicated, maybe the pattern doesn't emerge right away. Um, and maybe the derivatives get really messy really fast. Are there other techniques that you can use? Turns out, yes. Um, you're going to see some of those once you learn how to, you know, manipulate series, um, taking derivatives and antiderivatives of series. There are some tricks that you can do there, right? Um, if you're seeing this in Calc 1, you don't have those tricks up your sleeves, but there's still some basic things that you can notice if you start playing around with some of these examples, like this one here. Um, so for part A, well, we don't know what's going on with the sine function, so we just start taking derivatives and we see what happens, right? So f of x is sine, f prime of x is, is cos, f double prime is negative sine. The third derivative is negative cosine. And once we get to the fourth derivative, Right, we're, we're back where we started, right? So, not as simple as the exponential function, but there's still a pattern, right? Cycle repeats every four derivatives, right? So once you know how to do, you know, up to P3, you kind of have some idea of how it's going to go from there, right? So, we start computing. F of zero is zero. F prime of zero cos of 0 is 1, okay? f double prime of 0 is 0 again. f triple prime of 0 is minus 1, okay? And from there, the pattern is going to repeat, right? So the coefficients are always going to go 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, minus 1. Um, so, you know, in fact, if we wanted to, we could say, hey, let's do the degree n Maclaurin polynomial, right? And it's going to look like... Well, maybe we say um, something like 2n plus 1, right? Um, because the even degree terms don't show up. The coefficient is 0. So what we're going to get is something that looks like x, right? 1 times x minus, so there's no x squared term. So the next term is going to be x cubed over 3 factorial. There's no degree 4 term, right? So the next one is x to the 5, right? So the next derivative is going to be cosine again, which is derivative is 1 over 5 factorial. So you have x to the 5 over 5 factorial, right? And if we wanted degree 5, we're done. Otherwise, go on to 7, and why not? There's 7 factorial. And what does this look like, you know, at the end? Um, so if, if we think of this in terms of, of, you know, n, this is 2 times 0 plus 1, degree 1. 2 times 1 plus 1. 2 times 2 plus 1. 2 times 3 plus 1, right? So in general, we get an x to the 2 times n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. And what about the signs? Um, plus signs for 0, 2, next would be 4, and so on. Minus signs for 1, 3, next would be 5. Um, so plus signs when n is even, minus signs when n is odd. Um, so we should have a minus 1 to the n out front. Okay. Well, that's not so bad. Um, now, degree 10 Maclaurin polynomial for sine of x squared, right? So this gets a little bit trickier because now we've got chain rule with the derivatives and I need 10 of them, right? And of course, the point of this exercise 
is for us to realize at the end that we didn't have to do this. But you've got to do it once before you, before you realize that. Okay, so 2x cos x squared, right? Second derivative. Okay, product rule now. 2 cos x squared, right? And then minus, so we've got to do uh, 4x squared sine x squared, right? Derivative of cos becomes negative sine x squared on the inside. Multiply by the derivative, 2x times the 2x that's already there, right? Okay, and by now you're probably getting concerned that I said I wanted to go all the way to 10 derivatives. Let's, let's do a couple more. Okay, derivative of cos is negative sine, right? 2x is going to come out. Minus 4x sine x squared, okay? Minus 8x sine x squared. So I guess, let's just combine. Let's try to speed things up here. 12x. Um, and then 4x squared times the derivative of sine cos times another 2x. 8x cubed cos x squared. Okay. Fourth derivative. We're going to get minus 12 sine of x squared. Huh, okay. Um, minus 12x cos, so minus 24x squared. I want another 24, so actually 48x squared cos x squared. Okay. And then derivative of cos is negative sine minus minus cos plus um, 16x to the 4. You tired of this yet? I'm tired of this. Should we keep going? Maybe one more. I don't know if I even want to do one more. Uh, let's do two more. Okay. Um, minus 12. Derivative of sine is cos with a 2x, so minus 24x cos x squared. Um, plus, okay, a whole bunch of other stuff that I'm not going to do, all right? But it's all going to have x's in it. And x is going to be set to 0, right? We're doing Maclaurin. Um, I just want to point out that the next one, g6, is going to have minus 24 cos x squared in it, and then some other stuff, okay? So, g of 0 is 0, g prime of 0, 0, g double prime of 0, I get something, I get 2, g triple prime is 0, fourth derivative, 0, fifth derivative, zero. The sixth derivative is minus 24. Okay. Um, which happens to be minus 4 factorial. Not that you were keeping score. Um, okay. I'll, 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 I'll tell you what's going to happen next. Uh, the seventh derivative and the eighth derivative and the ninth derivatives, if you, if you care to keep going, they're all going to be zero. The tenth derivative, it won't be zero, okay? The tenth derivative, well, it's going to give us a number. Um, we got to figure it out. But we're not going to go all that way. Let me just tell you what happens, because this is already kind of, we're pro pushing ten minutes here. Um, what we're going to get for my p5 and x, okay, it's going to be, so the first non-zero thing is here, 2. So 2 over 2 factorial, those cancel, right? 2 over 2 factorial times x squared, I get x squared. The next one is here at 6, minus 4 factorial over 6 factorial, okay, times x to the 6th. Now, the next term I'm going to get is going to be, so we said it, there's going to be an x to the 10, okay? Um, 
should be dividing by 10 factorial, right? But what we're going to find is that um, in the end, there's only a 5 factorial left over. Um, okay? So what you actually get for x to the 10 here, it turns out what you're going to get is it's going to be 10 factorial divided by 5 factorial is, is the number that's going to come out. Um, okay? Does that work? Yeah, yeah. Okay? Um, so, and so the point of this is 4 factorial or 2 factorial, um, that, that should simplify, right? Uh, yeah. Let me make sure I got this right. Yeah, it should be. should just leave with a 6. I might have made some mistakes here. Um, what you should get is you replace x by x squared everywhere. So you get x squared, and then you get 1 over 3 factorial. So this should be a 5 factorial, um, times x squared cubed, plus 1 over 5 factorial times x squared um, to the fifth, and so on. And so actually all you have to do is replace x by x squared in the one that you already have, and you get the next one along the way. Okay? Um, I've almost certainly made some calculation errors here. Not surprising given what I'm dealing with, right? It's, it's a bit of a mess. Um, you can sort of see how this might happen. But you should end up with something that looks like that, right? So you can kind of, you start playing around, you start learning these tricks. Um, you can plug one thing into another sometimes. doesn't always work out. Um, but you definitely do not want to sit down and calculate 10 derivatives of, this, of sine of x squared using, using the chain rule. That's, that's going to be a terrible mess, right? Um, if you see something like that, you have to guess that probably there was a better way to do it.